The Clemson Tigers are without a doubt the the class of the ACC, and they have moved themselves into a position where they occupy that space in a way that Ohio State does in the Big Ten and Oklahoma does in the Big 12, that anytime we talk about the ACC and what's going to happen on the football field, your number one stop has to be uh, in the upstate with Dabo Sweeney and this Clemson Tigers team that has rolled off six consecutive ACC championships. Now, the season didn't end the way they had hoped uh, as they did end up getting lit up by Justin Fields and the Ohio State offense. Trevor Lawrence didn't have an awful game, but frustrating as it marks his second uh, second straight season that ends in New Orleans in the Superdome uh, to, with a loss uh, to a blue blood, obviously the other one being in the national championship game against LSU. So as the Clemson Tigers say goodbye to Trevor Lawrence, they say goodbye to two-time ACC player of the year, Travis Etienne. We enter the DJ Uyunga Lele era. We've got a group of young wide receivers that, you know, we've mentioned several times on here, didn't quite develop or had injury issues such that, you know, we had like Cornell Powell's gone, Amari Rogers, uh, you know, Travis Etienne, Trevor Lawrence, we're, we're rebuilding things. Defensive side of the ball, totally different. If Mike Jones Jr. had stayed instead of transferring to LSU, we'd have every single uh, starter back. But we've also said goodbye to Darion Kendrick. But it is a, a loaded group, especially up front, with a lot of those young players, Brian Brzee, Miles Murphy, now a year older. So we have a game against Georgia on the schedule. And then, of course, the pursuit of another ACC championship and a college football playoff. Uh, college football playoff, of course, being impacted by the results of that game against the Bulldogs. With it being Clemson, I wanted to start with where are you concerned? Mm. <laughs> Can I say that I'm not? <laughs> You're, yes, that, I think that that's an answer. I, I'm not all that concerned. I, I It's strange because there's there's an aspect to it where you know, clearly Trevor Lawrence is gone. One of the best quarterbacks in the country for the last years, if not the best, going to be the number one pick in the draft. And typically when you'd see that, they would be like, all right, well, cool. We got like a QB kind of battle to pay attention to going into the spring. That's going to be interesting for this team, but we already know who the QB is going to be. So that takes it out of it. So now it's like, okay, well, okay. Travis Etienne's gone. All right. Well, how are they going to replace him? Well, they'll probably replace him with the guy who's been his backup the last few years. Oh, and there's a five-star freshman coming in who's already enrolled. So maybe he'll get some, you know, time there. So there's really nothing to worry about there. Defensively. I think what was on Connolly's returning production rankings, their defense ranks, what? Third. Right? Third, yeah, as far as like production coming back. So, all right, everybody's back on defense. And the, while they're way down on offense, that's because of Trevor Lawrence and ETN, but they'll replace both of them. So, like, my only real concern about Clemson, and I don't know that it's a concern, concern is just receivers. Somebody needs to step up and be the guy because as we've spent so much time talking about on this podcast over the last season, receivers are becoming more and more important. And that felt like the one area where Clemson was deficient in comparison to the other college football playoff contenders last season. I, uh, Chip, this is a pattern with me. Cause I think you've noticed I'm too patient with head coaches, right? You called yes. me out that a couple times. You're like, you'd never fire anybody with, I have another similar kind of character trait that I just, I get concerned with new quarterbacks and I know DJ looked awesome when he played and against Notre Dame on the biggest stage out there, you know, didn't miss a beat over 400 yards passing looked like he was totally calm in the moment. Like everything looked great. I just, I, I don't know. Like I still, there's a part of me that wants to see young quarterbacks struggle. Like I, and how do you respond after that struggle? Like I, like that's one of the reasons I was really bullish on Mac Jones at Alabama going into this season was because he threw two pick sixes against uh, Auburn in a loss the year before, but it didn't rattle him. Like he kept coming back and threw for, I think he ended up throwing for 400 yards in that game. And like, he was not phased at all. Like, I want to see how a quarterback does. Like what happens if DJ goes out and has a rough game against Georgia, which is not crazy to think that that could happen. Like, how does he respond to that? But in saying that, I'm not worried about Clemson winning the ACC. You know, mm -hmm. like to me, it's kind of like, what we saw with Spencer Rattler last year with Oklahoma struggled early. They took their lumps and then they end up winning, you know, winning the big 12, but it's just enough to have them miss the playoffs. Like, I wonder if 
DJ has some learning curve type of game where it's a fourth quarter, you know, like exactly what you saw with Spencer Rattler, trying to squeeze balls into tight windows where they're open all the time, usually in practice or in high school, but then all of a sudden they're gone and it's an interception and you lose. And then that criticism starts coming your way. And then it's, well, man, we miss Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson. And is DJ that good? Those types of criticisms come in and how does it impact your play? So yeah, I think he's going to be great. I think he's going to be awesome, but I don't, I don't, there's always that sliver of doubt in me that says, I don't know. Like maybe how does he respond? Is that a traditionalist move? Like I want to see, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, want, I want to see guys grow. I don't want to see these guys come in here and just hit the ground running. I like it. Yeah. And then listen, and you will have a great, uh, a, a lot of space to yourself. If you want to take in, take up a fade DJU uh, position. <laughs> I don't want it to be that. Here. I don't want to be like, it's not going to be, be my all Colin you, Cowherd. baby. <laughs> it's not going to be my Colin Cowherd, Baker Mayfield, like the vendetta. <laughs> like I'm not going to have that. I'm just concerned. Like, I think he's going to be awesome. He probably is going to be a number one overall pick, but for what it means Clemson specifically and what their goal is to win a national championship, I'm not christening DJ as the national championship winning quarterback just yet. Okay. But if Danny if, wants to squeeze DJ, you, I'm ready. Just like, absolutely. Like, like squeeze that short, dude. <laughs> like, 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 let, let's, let's AMC that thing. Um, well, I, I got, I got a proposition though. If DJ, you tweets about seeing a UFO, can Danny then start <laughs> yes. talking about how? <laughs> yes. My quarterback wouldn't do that. I never did that when I was a quarterback in big time college football, we can make it. Oh, man. I, I think I'm kind of there with Tom. I, I really don't have many concerns. This was already a really good football team last year. The, the defense the defense just couldn't get to that level, I think, where it needed to, to match up with, with what Trevor had, and Trevor was trying to carry that offense with your receivers that didn't really scare anybody. I mean, Cornell Powell had a nice year, but, like, that unit was supposed to be Justin Ross, and then, and then, and then, he, you know, then he hurts his neck, right? And, Who, by the way, misses, is misses the whole year. back. Mm-hmm. back and apparently back like healthy enough to where Dabo's talking about him being the punt returner yeah so like he might be like back back and like uh, re- re- real healthy and ready to go and I like DJ Williams too I'm as soon as I was you know sitting there talking I thought that as a freshman EJ Williams had a good like couple games right near the end of the year where he was flashing in a way where I could see him being a bigger factor throughout the entire season no doubt and they, they, they've stepped up the recruiting in the last couple of years I, I think the chance you get either one of Jonah Goddard or Frank Ladson to take a step is is pretty high and so that should help solve some of their their issues on offense, which were lack of explosive plays through the air. They just didn't get the ball down the field on big plays like, like they used to. On defense, they had the exact opposite problem. They allowed a ton of bombs, and I think part of it was they had the blitz too much. Like the guys they had up front were either too young or too injured. But when I mean, you think about it, like Tyler Davis and, and X-Man and K.J. Henry and uh, Brzee and Murphy – all those guys are a year older. They're all back. I think the chance that they don't have a dominant defensive front is very low. And I think everybody in the secondary, including Andrew Booth, who's already awesome, will look even better for having that pass rush, and they won't have to blitz quite as much. Question for you, bud, because like I, I mentioned, they've got Will Shipley, who's a five-star coming in at running back, who I don't, would, would be surprised to see if he gets any snaps as fall because he is enrolled early, but just at the wide receiver position because they've got two four-stars that are enrolled early. There's Bo Collins out of California and Dakari Collins. So the Collins guys, will either of them, are, do you consider either of them to be the level to where they could make an impact as freshmen this year? Not really, but Shipley, I think will, will play because he, he catches the ball. Well, he, like we, we have APB, which is all purpose back next to his name. I, I think he will get some run uh, for sure. And, and he catches the ball, you know, really well. Uh, the One of the guys that I have heard uh, who, might have some some potential there to play early is uh, Alou Ba, who is a dude, at, um, I believe he's actually Canadian, uh, who came, came down to Clearwater and was somebody that Clemson was, was pretty high on. He was in the 20, was he a 20 kid? Trying to, like, some of his years from, from prior years. Think together 20, now, but, yeah. yeah, so uh, not, not Alou Ba, excuse me. Uh, Ajo Ajo, dude oh, at Clearwater. Yeah. yeah. That dude like, is outrageous. He's pretty freaky. If he takes a step, that that's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, all right, 